Hello everyone, it's Sri from Rebel Technology and I'm back with another episode of Max Gen Tutorial. So we've built the VCO section on the previous episode. Today we're going to add VCF and a VCA to complete this synth voice. So instead of building the filter section from the scratch, what we're going to do is be a bit lazy and go to the gen example and grab one of the example patch and implement that back into our patch. So let's go to our help section and open the gen filter example like this. And what we want to do is to grab the one in the top middle called low res. So let's double click and open it up. And of course it opens on the other screen. So I'm going to grab it, drag it along like so. And this is a nice two pole low pass filter with the resonance control. So what we're going to do is unlock it and select all of them, copy and paste this into our patch. So I'm going to close the window and paste this and carefully grab what's been pasted down into the patch. So let's uh, make a little bit more space. I'm going to push all these out objects and push it further down the patch. So we have enough space for the pasted filter section. So let's grab the filter section and let's slot it in below the VCO section. Okay, so the first inlet, that's pretty straightforward. That's your input. So we can get rid of this and then grab the output from the mix object straight into the input. So that's good. And then the second inlet is your frequency, which means your cutoff frequency. So what we're going to do is to... Okay, where's the param A? Yeah, there you go. So grab param A. And since this param A only spits the value between 0 and 1, so what we need to do is we need to do some sort of scaling. But since the frequency that we perceive won't be linear, it needs to be logarithmic. So we have to think of a little clever way of scaling this output. So let's think about the example of something that actually have a linearly distributed input, but with the logarithmic output. And the first thing that crossed my mind is the MIDI note. So when you think about the MIDI note, the input will be linear because the MIDI note number goes from zero to one to seven. And there's always 12 MIDI notes within each octave, regardless of how low or how high the note goes. We then convert that MIDI number into frequency so the oscillator can understand. And this perfectly applies to the cutoff frequency as well. So let's multiply the param output with 1 to 7. So we can convert the output from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 to 7, which is similar to how MIDI note works. We can then call up this super handy object called MTOF, which stands for MIDI to frequency which let you do the logarithmic conversion to frequency. So let's connect this up. And since we want to make sure that there won't be any steps when you move the cutoff frequency, so let's add some slide. So that's gonna smooth out the transition between each values like so. And there you go. You've got your frequency cutoff sorted. So let's move on to the resonance which is your input three. So since we have this clip object that is plugged into in three, we can safely assume this input expects the value between zero and 0 0.99999. So what we can do is to grab param B and simply get rid of the in object and instead plug in this param. And since this looks a bit spaghetti-like and a bit messy, so let's grab all of these that's making the filter and get rid of the param. And let's encapsulate this 
into a nice neat little gem patch and let's rename it to gen low reds so we know what we're dealing with later on and here we go keep it all nice and neat like this and let's make sure that we label them properly so that's your cut off so let's just put cf like that and then that's your resonance so you can just type in q and let's just move it a bit closer like this okay so before we move on to the vca section we wanted to do one last thing to basically improve the performance of this vcf and the reason why i say this is when i was developing this patch what i realized was when you set the queue low the cutoff doesn't quite work properly towards the lower frequency so what we want to do is to boost the queue as we turn the cutoff frequency below a certain point okay so first things to do is to add the less than operator and add the value of 0.45 which I think is around 150 hertz, I think, in this case. So what we want is to create a sort of mechanism that only works when the cutoff frequency goes below a certain point. Okay, so let's grab the output from Param A and plug it into the comparator. And then what we want to do is to add the history. So it delays the same value by one sample because when we set up the gate what we want is for the gate to open when the param value go below 0 0.45 and then it passes on what comes out from the history okay so let's grab all of these objects because we're running out of space so here you go and since we need to scale this because as the value of param a decreases we want it to boost the queue so what we need to do is to multiply by two so the value goes from 0 0.9 to 0 instead of 0 0.45 to 0 so let's plug in the gate And then we'll do the inverse subtract from one. So this way, as the value of param A decreases, the value goes into the queue will increase. And let's set up another gate just for the uh, safety. So it always closes and output the value of zero every time the cutoff value goes above the comparator value. Okay, let's do a little bit of organizing, putting everything close together and then push this low res slightly down so we have a bit more space because we need to add what we've calculated into the Q value. So let's call up the add object like so and then plug the output of the gate into the right inlet and let's encapsulate this bit because yeah it's always nice to keep the patch clean and let's rename this to q comp and let's shrink this thing like that and then push that up a little bit because we're going to do a little bit more stuff on the below Okay, so the first thing to add is the slide. So everything will transition very smoothly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the square root object. So the scaling will be logarithmic. And then lastly, I'm gonna add the little clip and I'm gonna add minimum of zero and then the maximum value of 0 0.97. This clip value is basically what I've sort of figured out 
the, the sort of the most natural sounding sort of cue compensation that I can do. The trade-off will be you won't get the self-oscillating filter, but for the purpose of this patch, I think it's a good trade-off. Okay, I think the VCF section is all good. So let's put the comment on and then let's move on to the VCA section. Okay, so I'm just gonna again grab these objects and push it down below so we have a lot of space and we don't need this out anymore. Okay, so the final thing to add is the VCAs. So what we need is all of these four params. So let's push it all the way down like that. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to build is a fairly simple VCA with just attack and release. Okay, so the first thing to do is to multiply this gain and gate. The reason why we do this is because the value that gain gets is purely from the velocity and it actually ignores the MIDI note on off message because that side of things is actually handled by the gate param. So in order to properly integrate the MIDI note off message, you need to basically multiply the gate out, which outputs one at MIDI note on and zero at MIDI note off. And this way you can absolutely make sure that when you release the key on your MIDI keyboard, the value goes into the VCA will go back down to zero, hence closing the VCA. So let's add our favorite object slide and without setting any initial values. So this way, what we can do is to use the param AA and AB and use those as the variable control. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the value of those param by sample rate. And then plug the output of each param and then that goes into the slide. And let's do the same for param A, B. And it goes in like that. And then let's just uh, straighten everything up by moving things around a bit like that. So the reason we multiply the output of param A, A and A, B by the sample rate is just simply to set the attack and release maximum length to one second but this is just me making things simple. You don't have to conform to this length. So yeah, feel free to just change things a bit. So let's apply this VCA to the output. So let's call up the multiply object and then plug the output of low res and then output slide into each inlet. And then let's take the output of the multiply goes into both audio outs. And while we're at it, what we're going to do is we're going to do the CV stuff from the VCA. So what we want is to have the same envelope going out from out three, which is your CV out one. And then we're going to invert the envelope for the out two. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by minus one. So it goes from zero to minus one. And then we're going to add one. So the value goes from one to zero like that. And then finally, what we're going to do is just simply grab the output from the gate param and connect it to out five, which is your gate out in this patch. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for the building part of this. We got the VCO, VCF and the VCA. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this quickly. And I think I've already got the simple synth folder. Yeah, there you go. So select that folder and then let's save this as simple synth toot. And hit the save button and then let's close this window 
and go back to the max level. And what we need to do is to unlock this patch and change the name of this gen object to simple synth toot. So it will call up the correct gem patch. And then we can save this max patch as the same name. So we know what max patch to work with. Okay, so let's test the patch. So let's assign the MIDI keyboard. And then, yeah, I can see the gates working and change the attack and release like that. Yep. And the cutoff works. Yep. The portmanteau seems to be working. The mix works too. Yep, that's great. And then that's your pulse width. That's cool. That's nice. And then that's my detune for the triangle. That seems to be working. Let's just check it again. And the cue's working as well. Yeah, that all seems to be in order, which is great. Okay, that seems to be working. Oh, actually, I forgot to assign these push buttons. So let's go back into the patch and grab these two param button A and B. And just simply drag it close to the VCA. And all we have to do is to plug in the output of those params into the slide leftmost inlet and then go back and there you go and when I click yeah that gate opens so that's all good okay I think we're gonna wrap up this video here because we covered quite a lot again today so thank you so much for tuning in as usual, if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button so we can keep you updated with the new video when we release it. And if you have any questions so far, feel free to comment it so we can answer it as soon as we can. And on our next episode, we're going to cover how to upload this patch onto Lich using our online compiler. So until then, happy patching. See you soon. Bye.